will be the following first. I say one that's like a you reach in 17 minutes and this patient. The United States doesn't have a sovereign wealth fund, 
But for example, some states like Texas have created sovereign wealth funds for their schooling systems. In the event that they run out of revenue for normal processes, they can tap into this wealth fund and use it to sustain programs. This is exactly what a country like the UAE, which is dependent on oil revenue, does. In the case that oil revenue plummets even further, they have a roughly 773 billion US dollar worth sovereign wealth fund to tap into and make sure that their social programs are still functioning. This puts down and helps quell cries that democratic reforms aren't strong enough because the monarchy is continuing to take care of people even if they don't have a democratic system to request new measurements. And to put that in context, we turn to the, re the same report, which points out that Russia, by comparison, only has a 160 billion US dollar sovereign wealth fund. That amount is expected to last Russia roughly two years, and the massive amount that the UAE has accumulated can surely last itself up to five years. And what's more, as a May 21st report from the Khaljil Times, a local UAE newspaper shows, is that this sovereign wealth fund is being expanded. In the next five years, India is expected to ex accept more than 10% more investments from, from UAE companies in their real estate development. And since those companies are connected to the Emirates leadership, they give back money and revenue to the wealth fund, allowing it to grow. And that 10% could help it easily pass the 800 billion US dollars mark, making it an even stronger sovereign wealth fund and potentially passing Norway for the strongest in the entire world. We all know that Norway's done a good job of managing this. But the final reason that this economic growth gives the UAE the potential to save off calls for democratic reforms because they also have the propensity for exploratory projects. Just like how in the United States, each of the 50 states is considered a laboratory for democracy and economic growth, the same can be said of the seven UAE Emirates. Each one has a different economic and social character. And in one particular, the Sharjah state, there is new impetus for democratic as well as economic reforms that go hand in hand. On March 21st, the Sheikh, the leader of that emirate, hosted a communications forum, and the report afterwards describes new plans for educational and business-related democratic reforms that are connected to economic growth. Taking advantage of the expected IPOs that will come from the Saudi Arabian market, the Sharaj Sheikh wants to implement new grants specifically for female leaders in business, creating their own startups or taking important management positions especially in a country that is considered to have poor propensity for protection and support of women, this is a bold step forward. And it doesn't have to be a step that's created all across the country. It can be trialed in some time in the next five years in just one of the Emirates, and then try to be reproduced. And one of the reasons that it might be easy to reproduce is brought up in a March 6th article from the Financial Times, which shows that the cabinet reshuffle that happened two years ago in the UAE means that not only are ministers and parliament members within one emirate connected with each other, but also between each of the seven states. So if something does work in the Sharjah state, it would be fairly easy, much easier than it would be in Saudi Arabia, to transfer the results and reproduce them in another state. It's a question that must be causing trouble and fear in the minds of any monarch. Will the United Arab Emirates' economic growth be able to ward off cries for democratic reform in the next five years? But thankfully, the answer for them is yes. They can maintain the strategy of providing care from the crib to the grave because they've diversified their economic growth, they've built a strong sovereign wealth fund, and have the potential to take exploratory measures that give democratic reforms in just the right capacity to maintain growth and social order. The crib to grave strategy does work. And we're not just talking about any crib for you Arab children. If we were to go on a TV show, the United Arab Emirates crib would be surely decked out.